Hello. My name is Hans George Campbell and I want to welcome you to part two of my Commodore A2286 bridge board series. Tonight I thought I'd show you the actual bridge board and show you and talk about the modifications that I did to the board to improve its speed and performance. Here is the main board of the Commodore A2286 bridge board. And when I first got the board, um, I noticed that it did not have the math coprocessor chip. This socket here was empty. I also noticed that the 286 was not made by Intel. It was made by a third party manufacturer and that it was only an 8 megahertz chip. Okay, so the first thing I did was I um, popped out the original third-party 286 processor and I plugged in a genuine Intel 286 processor running at 10 megahertz. Remember, the original processor was a third-party 286 running at 8 megahertz. So I increased the speed another 2 megahertz. I also had to remove the original 16 megahertz clock crystal right here and I had to solder on a brand new 20 megahertz clock crystal. Half of 20 megahertz is 10 megahertz which is what the processor, the new processor um, requires. I also plugged in a genuine Intel math coprocessor uh, co chip. Um, I believe this is the 80 uh, 287X chip. Now the X means that it is a variable speed math chip. Uh, it runs basically at the same speed as the main processor up to 12.5 megahertz because the fastest Intel 286 is a 12.5 megahertz chip. Now there are third party 286 processors that go all the way up to 25 megahertz. Okay. Um, now in the future, when I get another one of these boards, I'm going to try uh, one of the faster processors with the faster clock crystal and see, you know, what happens. So see if I can, you know, get the bridge board to run at that, well, at least 12.5 megahertz and make sure it works that way first and then try with the 25 megahertz third party. 286 processor and you know see what happens see how fast I can get these 286 boards to run but this one here runs at 10 megahertz it is stable never had any problems out of it so what I did here on the main board is it worked out perfectly but something that you have to understand the the high density floppy disk drive chip that's on the daughter board also gets its 16 megahertz clock from this same crystal. So if you replace this with a faster crystal, that chip will no longer function properly unless you make a few modifications to the daughter board. So um, that's, where, that's what we're going to look at and, and talk about next. All right, here we have the daughter board. And in order to install a faster 286 processor onto the main board, you do have to make some modifications to the daughter board in order for all of this to work properly. 
Now, the first thing I did on the daughter board was, of course, I recapped. I think there's like, what, one, two, uh, three, four capacitors. So it was really easy to recap the, the board. I did the same thing on the main board, too. I think there's like five capacitors on the main board. Um, another thing I did, okay, this is your clock module right here, this Dallas clock module, which has the battery inside this module. So the original one was soldered on. And so I had to first unsolder that clock module, and then I soldered in, I think it's a 24-pin socket. I had to cut off some of the leads um, because the holes are not in the board for those leads. Okay, And I soldered on that, that socket, and that allows me to plug in a brand new Dallas uh, clock module. And then when the battery finally goes bad on this one, I can just unplug it and plug in a new one. You know, so, yeah. Um, this right here is the high-density floppy disk controller chip. It needs a 16 megahertz clock in order to function properly. Um, now, normally, when you get this board, okay, let me zoom in. I want to zoom in on this main part over here. Zoom in so I can show you a little bit better. This part right there. Okay, right about, I don't know, right about there is pretty good. Yeah, I don't want to go overboard here. Okay, normally, okay, this part right here is empty. This space right here is empty. There's no clock crystal there. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to solder on a 16 megahertz crystal right here into that location. And that crystal will be used by this high density floppy disk controller chip. Okay? The other thing that you have to do is you have to drill through this trace right here on the left hand side and you have to bridge the the two traces on the right hand side. So you have to cut this trace and solder blob this trace. And what that does, that tells the floppy disk controller chip to use this crystal instead of the one that is on the main board near the processor. And that's what you have to do. Now I, I had a hard time finding documentation on this, on this modification. It's like Commodore did not want people upgrading uh, the processor on this 286 bridge board. They didn't want to go beyond the 8 megahertz. They wanted to force you to buy their faster 386 bridge board. And so that's why they did that. There's like only, I mean, there's no documentation on this anywhere. I looked. I found it in one location. Accidentally, I found it. And it was actually by Commodore. And um, so that's how I found out how to do it. And I always wonder, okay, why is there an empty space right here for a clock crystal near the high-density floppy disk controller chip? It's got to be there for a reason. And so that's why it's there. Now, a lot of people on the, in the forums, they were talking about, okay, um, when you do the, this modification, okay, how does that affect the bridge board's or the bridge board running on, on the ESA bus. Let me put this back here so you can see it in all of its glory. Uh, well, go out a little bit like that. I'll put the bridge board back here so you can see it. Looks nice, you know. Yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> I'll have to go overboard on it, you know. Yeah, that looks good. Yep, looks good. I'm not going to worry about it. Anyway, okay. Um, if you notice, okay, the answer to that question, there's other crystals here. Okay? And these crystals are what the rest of the chips use. And, and that's how you keep your ESA bus stable. Okay, as far as I know from the research that I've done on the 286 bridge board, 
is that this clock right here, this clock crystal here, is just for the processor. And this clock crystal is just for the floppy disk controller chip. Okay? So, because of this, I think it is possible to replace this 286 with Intel's fastest 286, which is a 12.5 megahertz, and then just install a 25 megahertz clock crystal right there. I'm pretty sure that works because this is a 10 megahertz 286 with a 20 megahertz crystal, and it works fine, no problems at all. So I don't see why the 12.5 megahertz uh, 286 with the 25 megahertz clock crystal. I don't see why that wouldn't work because even this math chip here this X version of this math chip supports all the way up to 12.5 megahertz. So, yeah, it's something to think about. Something I'm thinking about trying. Uh, I don't want to try it on this one because this one's stable. It works good. I don't want to mess with something. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm a firm believer in that. Okay? So I'll wait until I get another 286 bridge board and I'll try... First, I'll try a 12.5 megahertz chip with 25 megahertz clock crystal to see if that works and how stable it is. And you, you guys get to see me do all of this. I'll do some benchmarking on the Amiga and everything. And after it's all stable, then I'll try a 25 megahertz third party 286 chip in there with um, uh, the 50 megahertz clock crystal to see how stable the board is, you know, with, with a faster chip, you know. Okay. Um... For those of you that are wondering why this is called the bridge board, I will explain that when we come back. Okay. The actual bridge, part of the bridge board, is made up basically of these four memory chips right here. This is your bridge. That allows the PC side and the Amiga side to communicate with each other. This 128K of memory, these four memory chips right here, that's your bridge right there. This one megabyte of memory right here, that is used not only by the 286 processor, but this extra, this one megabyte of memory can also be used by the Amiga if you need extra fast memory. You can use this memory that's on the bridge board. Okay. But yeah, for those of you that, that have wondered, okay, well, exactly what is the bridge part of the bridge board? Well, that's what it is. It's these four memory chips right here. This is your bridge. This is what makes that possible. Okay? Anyway, that's it for part two of my Commodore um, A2286 bridge board series of videos. Uh, stay tuned for part three, which will be uploaded real soon. Um, if you have not subscribed to my channel, Maybe you should. If you like watching videos about vintage computers and um, recapping and repairs and upgrades and uh, unboxing and reviews of modern hardware as well as vintage hardware, and if you like videos about uh, you know seeing software, original vintage computer software in the original boxes, complete with the manuals and everything, you know the code wheels and everything. And if you like seeing vintage computer game playthroughs, like Commodore 64 games and Amiga games, I think you're really going to love this channel. I really do. And I think you should subscribe. And also by subscribing to my channel, it gives me the incentive to continue making wonderful content for your viewing pleasure. You know. Because I see that, okay, people are subscribing, they're hitting the like button. I think they like what I'm doing, so I'll continue doing it. So, yeah. 
And plus, you know, I'm retired now. I'm 63 years old. I'm retired. I'm on a fixed income drawing Social Security. So if I can make a little extra money each month from YouTube, you know, you guys will really be helping me out. You know, an old, an old computer uh, enthusiast and gamer like yourselves, you know, you'll be helping me out. So, yeah. So, yeah, if you like this kind of content, maybe you should subscribe. Anyway, my name is Hans George Campbell, and until next time.